Hi there, today I'm going to show you how to make this card. I think it's quite easy um, and you can make it in all sorts of different ways. You don't have to carry out all the steps that I'm going to show you. Uh, you can use any colour combination you want and I'm going to show you how to do this particular colour scheme which I think was uh, sort of a male orientated, so one for the boys and then I'm going to show you another completely different colour scheme, same steps and uh, it turns into a card for the girls. Mind you, if you're like me and like the colour green, this could uh, also be a card for you. I'm not sure if I'm quite um, rock and roll enough though for somebody to send this to me. I definitely had sort of youngsters in mind when I put this together. So the first thing to note before you begin is where you're going to be putting all your little marks, whether they're stamps or spots and dots of paint. So we'll be working in this L shape with a small little extra area on the top right hand side. I'm starting out using a peeled paint distress stain and these make a great tool for making splats. Now be careful if you've got a white blouse on, you uh, want to make sure you stay quite well back. Be a little bit careful at first when you start splatting but I'm li literally just pouncing uh, the top of the distress stains onto my card and roughly staying in that L shaped area and then a little bit of interest on the right hand side. So you'll see me drying things throughout um, and I'll also talk to you about things that you could substitute. So in this instance uh, for the distress stain, if you haven't got distress stains how could you make a splat? Well you could uh, possibly in your collection have a um, splat stamp and you could use that. So I'm going to again uh, make this card at the same time in a colour combination that I would consider a little bit girly. Uh, so I'm going to carry out the same steps using a different colour scheme. So I've started with a um, picked raspberry distress stain and uh, I've created some splats. Again it's just about being random. The whole way through this card you don't want to be you want to be roughly in the right area but you don't want to be too uh, precise so controlled random I suppose you'd call it so back to the boys version of this card so we've done our uh, little splats with our distress stain and now we're going to move on to the next layer so the next layer step two I'm going to be creating some texture using a mask this happens to be a bit of uh, sequin waste that I'm going to be using on the boys card and I'm using uh, acrylic paint for this next layer. So I've got a metallic green that I'm going to be using on the boys card and I'm just going to be uh, adding a little bit to some foam. This is dry foam but you could equally be using some kind of sponge. The trick is not to use too much paint and again you're just creating that imaginary L shape down your um, card. So working first of all down the left hand side and then across the bottom. You might have a stencil that you don't have to move it around like this um, and the other thing is if you don't have any stencils at all again look around the house and see what you've got perhaps that you could use as a mask or something like bubble wrap would work uh, or you can use some of your own texture stamps to add another layer so you're going to be choosing a different color uh, it could be done with ink equally uh, as paint and you just want to put that texture in um, to create the shape that we were going for. So for my girls card I'm going to be using some purple paint and I'm going to be using one of my Tim Holtz masks and I've got this doily one because it's a little bit more girly and uh, again I'm going to be laying down that L shape. You can see that the imprint I'm getting behind is definitely a little bit more feminine And then because this um, design is random, it doesn't matter that I turn uh, the mask onto its side. So now moving on to layer number three. And don't forget that I am drying this in between each of the layers because I don't want things to get too uh, messy. Now I'm going to be using the inside of one of my ink sprays. This one happens to be a dilution spray. I think it's something like vanilla custard. It's a lovely yellow colour. And I'm just making some random scratchings, a bit like noughts and crosses um, is the best way to describe them. And literally, again, following that L shape, but just being quite random about where, where I put things. 
just to, until they're pleasing with the eye and then I'm taking a paintbrush dipping it into the ink and then creating a few little droplets on the card and I'm not too bothered about masking off where they go uh, if they don't go exactly in the L shape I'm not too worried and, uh, and then I'm just again tapping my paintbrush until I'm happy with how many little tiny yellow dots that I've got on the card my real contrast colour to my pinks and purples is this lovely vibrant orange. So again using the little um, tube from the spray to make my little lines and marks. In the first instance. And then taking my paintbrush and cleaning my paintbrush in between but just drying it off slightly because I don't want my droplets to be too watery and adding some few a few orange splatters to the design and then it's back out with the heat gun and uh, clearing up in between each of the different steps so that was step three and then we're moving on to step four this uses a Lego brick uh, again, it could equally be a stamp, but you know, I'm just trying to have a little bit of fun with this, uh, sort of suggesting that you can look around your craft room and find lots of different elements to add texture to this design. So, step four using a Lego brick, as I said earlier, and instead of using an acrylic paint, I'm going to use an emulsion that I had. Uh, it's a tester pot from my son's room. And unfortunately I'm loading up my Lego brick off camera which I apologize for um, I'm just using my piece of foam that I was using earlier tapping it into my paint and then loading up my Lego brick as if it was a stamp and then again I'm just randomly stamping and creating marks around that L-shaped area And again, the trick is to make sure you don't overload the Lego block. So once you're happy with how many imprints you've got, um, you won't be working on two cards at the same time uh, as I am here, but uh, you're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm going to be using a lilac paint on my girl's card. And I'm again using that piece of foam just to uh, lightly load up the Lego brick as if it was a stamp and then randomly stamping it in that L shape. Now a lot of these techniques you'll see used in art journals, looking for lots of different ways to add texture to a page. So I probably could have called it an art journal card and um, I'm using a lot of those techniques to make marks on my card. And uh, I'm using a pen lid here, which I'm just dipping into uh, the little puddle of navy blue paint and then just making a few circles on the design. And then I'm gonna be using this bright orange, again a tester pot. You can uh, probably guess that my son's room was quite colourful and I'm adding some orange circles to the girl design. And I didn't realise I was disappearing out of uh, shot but you can uh, get the gist of what I'm doing. So layer number six is um, a few more splatters. I just wanted to introduce a bit more of the dark colour and I've got this um, blue dilution spray so again with my paintbrush I'm just creating a few more splatters and I'm going to be using the bright pink to do the same on the girl card and it's funny the actual little um, dots take the longest to dry because they're always like little puddles I suppose and um, I'm just using my heat gun to make sure that I don't mess up the design at this point. Now you might think it already looks messy but uh, it can look messier still if you smudge your little dots <laughs> with your hand when you're working on the next step. And this is layer number seven and anywhere along this card design if there's something you haven't got or uh, you feel that you've achieved a look that you like you don't have to add all of the steps that I'm showing you. They're really just ideas on, of different ways to make marks um, and bring this design together. So now I'm using this little star stamp and a denim um, ink 
it's an Adirondack ink and I'm just randomly stamping a few stars into the mix. And a couple more along the bottom. It's all about being happy with what you've done. You might not like everything as dark as I have it here. I'm just using a uh, picked raspberry distress ink to stamp the stars on the girls card. Uh, you might want to stop after a couple of the steps or just uh, pick out the steps that you liked the look of the most. And I'm using the same as I did for the stars to create um, or to stamp the greeting onto a little piece of cardstock. And all the measurements for this card are over at my blog and I'll put the link to that at the end of this video. So next I'm stamping the greeting onto a little piece of card. That one is for the boys card. So we're almost there and uh, just to add another dimension to the card I um, rounded off the right hand edge of all the pieces of card that I was using. So just two corners uh, on the right hand edge. The same for the navy blue mat that I'll be mounting the boys card stock onto. And the next step, which I think is about step eight, um, I've just cut off a few um, slithers of patterned papers, again, that go with the colours that I'm working with. And I'm going to add these to sort of reinforce that L shape that we've been working on. So I'm just crossing them over and adding them one at a time. And I've just... Um, cut the ends into a little point. I'm not bothered about them being the same length, in fact I'm trying uh, to get them a little bit random and I'm just working one colour paper at a time. So it's just about picking little scraps of paper that go with the colours that you've decided to use. I'm just using um, PVA glue to attach the paper strips into place and then I'm just going to trim off that raw edge. And I've done the same, picked out um, some pattern papers, I wasn't sure which ones I was going to use so I'm just having a little look here um, and picking out three uh, patterns that I like and that go with the paint colours that I've used and then I'm just creating again that L shape on the front of my card. Now if you've got paper strips that are perhaps a little bit shorter in your scraps, you just cut out a few more strips. If you've got a full 12 by 12 length, then chances are you'll get away with one strip of that uh, pattern paper. I haven't tried to cut them all evenly, but I have kept them quite fine. Apologies if I sound a little bit blocked up today. I'm coming down with a bit of a cold. Uh, worst time to get one this time of year as the weather's changing. And uh, <laughs> I'm hoping I sound a little bit sexy rather than a little bit bunged up. <laughs> and I think now we're ready for the final step. And uh, that's back to the acrylic paint. And I poured far too much out. And you want to use something like a credit card. This is a little sort of plastic ruler. And I'm just using it to create a few marks in white on top of the design. And uh, it's again that kind of knots and crosses effect going on. So that's for the boys card. And then I'm repeating it once more on the girls card. Now before you put the card together you need to make sure that you have a good clean up, make sure there are no spots of paint or ink about and that all your paint is dry. And then I'm using double sided tape to attach my uh, card to their frame. So I've used the darker colour to frame each of the painted pieces and also the greeting. So like I said I'm going to put all the measurements on my blog but um, I'm going to read them to you now. So the actual piece that we worked on to start with measures five and one eighths of an inch by seven and three eighths of an inch and the little greeting on the white piece of card is on a two and a half by one inch piece of card. 
I'm using purple to frame the girls card and that measures five and a quarter by seven and a half inches for the main piece and for the greeting it measures uh, two and three eighths of an inch and one and one eighth of an inch. So the greeting and the uh, painted panel are all layered up using double sided tape but the greeting is put onto the card using foam pads and uh, just placing it here coming in from the left hand side. So both the card bases measure 8 inches by 11 and a half inches and then I'm going to score them in half at 5 and 3 quarter inches. And then again you're going to round the outside corners, a little bit stiff when you're working with two um, layers. And I'm making one pink base and one teal coloured base for the boys card. And again rounding that right hand side set of corners so that they match the design. And then the card front is all attached again using double sided tape. So it was at this point that I decided uh, that this kind of card really needs um, an inner making for it and I'm going to make one in exactly the same way uh, for the inside. So using the same measurements but this time just creating a little area of interest on the bottom right hand side and so I'm starting with my splats followed by a little bit of masking and some Lego printing <laughs> so what comes next I can't remember uh, ink I think so I'm going to do my ink splats more or less uh, one after the other so I've got and don't forget to dry in between the layers particularly on the wetter mediums because otherwise you'll end up with green ink where you had yellow <laughs> and then again adding a few lines and a few more splatters this time with the orange ink and then on the boys card it's back to the yellow etc 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 and you might think well actually I didn't need to sit through all that as uh, um, Helen's created those in us because I've already seen all those steps and you're right but now as you take a look at this uh, as I put my greeting into place actually it could equally be the front as the middle if you prefer this slightly minimal look compared to the front of the card you could make cards using this as the front of your card and that's why I've left it in and um, it really is why I brought this tutorial to you it's not rocket science it's not hugely difficult it's all about having fun with your paints and your inks and with anything that you have to hand to make marks on your card it's about grouping color together that you like um, you can create unusual combinations and it's all about having fun with where you place them you know, you might have just a line across the bottom of your card. You might have uh, this little piece as I've got in the inside on the front. And um, I'm just using this star because I did make a little bit of a smudge on the inner of my boys card. Um, and it was at this point I thought, you know what, I haven't finished yet. I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. And I've got some little purple flower sequins that I'm going to put on the girls card. And then some teeny tiny pink gems that I'm just going to add to the centre of each of these little flowers. Again this step is entirely up to you. If you haven't got sequins, you don't like sparkle, you don't have to do this step. It's all about giving you some ideas and uh, I hope that uh, you find this tutorial gets you going and um, makes you think of lots of different things that you could do. I'd love to see what you do if you uh, fancy sending me the link to, or sending me the photo and um, I'd be really happy to see what you come up with by way of 
um, using this tutorial as your starting point and then seeing what you can come up with. But I did think, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit of bling, even if this is a boy's card. They're teeny tiny gems and I'm just adding a couple of blue ones and a couple of green ones. Again, entirely optional. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for this very arty looking card. One for the girls and one for the boys. So as I leave you with a little close up of the details, uh, don't forget to press like if you've enjoyed this video or um, share it with your friends. I'm more than happy for you to make up this card design and um, I really hope that you have fun doing it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more from me and uh, if you're already subscribed, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it and I look forward to coming back um, again soon and sharing some more creativity with you. Don't forget to stay for the link if you want to go to my blog to um, get all those um, card dimensions written down. Till next time, thank you for watching.